If you want to lose weight, don't do cardio. Cardio for weight loss is a double-edged sword, and people very often use the wrong edge. If that's you, I'm about to change that. Watch this video to learn how cardio works, the best way to use cardio for losing weight, and what mistakes to avoid. First, a study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine by Ross and colleagues found that very high doses of cardio, equivalent to about 60 or 90 minutes of jogging, can lead to more fat loss than dieting. However, such high amounts of cardio are not practical for most people. The average person doesn't have time or energy to sustain 90 minutes of cardio per day. And that's not the only problem. Herman Ponser introduced the constrained energy model a few years ago. Basically, the body compensates for the calories burned during cardio by conserving energy elsewhere. So when you do more cardio, especially hard cardio, your body may subconsciously move less throughout the rest of the day. That means you're resting more, not going on that evening walk with your spouse, not taking the bike to work, not fidgeting as much at the desk, and even grabbing an extra snack or two. All this reduces the overall fat-burning effect of cardio. But cardio does work in principle. Here's why. First, cardio burns calories by increasing your heart rate and energy expenditure during the workout. Running, cycling, jumping jacks, heat, kickboxing, whatever cardio activities you're doing, they all require energy. Your body draws this energy from your stored fat and carbohydrates, creating a calorie deficit that leads to weight loss. Additionally, cardio improves heart health and endurance, so it's technically easier to engage in other physical activities that contribute to fat loss. Another reason cardio supports weight loss is through improved metabolism. High-intensity interval training and moderate-intensity steady-state cardio, like jogging or brisk walking, can elevate your metabolism both during and after the workout. This post-exercise calorie burn, known as the afterburn effect, or excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, allows your body to continue burning calories at an elevated rate even after the exercise is finished. Cardio also plays a role in improving insulin sensitivity, which helps your body manage blood sugar more effectively and reduces fat storage. This can prevent weight gain and encourage fat loss, especially around the abdominal area. Cardio also promotes appetite regulation for a lot of people because it controls hunger hormones. That makes it easier to stick to a calorie-controlled diet. Of course, there are many mistakes you can make to mess up those advantages, and I'll discuss them in a minute. For now, I know you're curious, so here's the best way to leverage cardio for weight loss, in my personal and professional opinion. I'm talking about metabolic conditioning workouts. These high-intensity workouts combine cardio and strength training for fat loss, so they're time-efficient and highly effective for burning fat. Basically, you'll be doing movements like kettlebell swings, burpees, and jump squats that maintain muscle mass while burning a significant number of calories. So you won't be actively building more muscle mass, but you won't lose existing muscles. Besides, you're keeping your metabolic rate up, maximizing caloric burn, and getting lots of cardiovascular benefits that prevent weight loss plateaus. But you can't reap these advantages if you keep making these mistakes. Cardio burns calories, but it's much easier to eat those calories back than it is to burn them off. For example, one study on 141 obese people had participants exercise five days per week for 10 months and instructed them to keep the same diets. People lost just up to 5.6 kilograms, which is about 11 pounds in 10 months. And that's for the group that did the 600 calorie workouts. This tells me the participants were probably overeating or overresting, which is not surprising given their intense workouts. If my math is correct, they should have lost three times more weight. Plus, even the afterburn effect can be overrated because it's just 6 to 15% of the total amount of calories you burn during the workout. To avoid this, combine cardio with a calorie-controlled diet to create a sustainable calorie deficit. Also, don't be afraid to get some carbs in before your workout to make sure your body has the needed glucose to transform into energy. A 60-calorie tablespoon of honey or a ripe banana will help curb those hunger pangs after the workout. Another mistake is doing too much cardio, which can lead to diminishing returns. Your body adapts by reducing non-exercise activity and possibly increasing hunger, making fat loss less effective. Instead, do cardio smartly. A quick heat session before hitting the weights if you do strength training is great. But don't do 100 jump squats before leg day if you're squatting 200 pounds. 
Instead, do lower body focused heat before your upper body day and vice versa to avoid fatigue. Or you can try metabolic conditioning workouts three times per week. If that's not your cup of tea, mainly cup of coffee in my case, do a 30 minute elliptical or 30 minute run on the treadmill or any other light cardio five to six days per week. But it's really important to make sure you can recover quickly from these sessions. Lastly, use a step tracker to ensure consistent activity throughout the day. Aim for at least 7,000 or 8,000 steps every day to stop your body from compensating by reducing non-exercise activity. On the other hand, if your daily activity is already low, cardio can make a good difference toward weight loss. But if you're not seeing good results from it, apply the tips and tricks in this video. And if you liked what I had to say and maybe even learned something new, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and ring the notification bell. It really helps small creators like me make more quality science-backed content, so thank you for doing this. Also, now I want to hear from you. Tell me how you're using cardio for weight loss, if you had success with it or not, and what secret hacks you're using to maximize your progress. I'll meet you in the comments below.